Welcome and thank you for participating in the module 5th grade Division of Fractions. In this module, we are going to look at understanding exactly what the 5th grade standard 5 NF7, uh, which is Division of Fractions, expects teachers to teach. Uh, in this module, the slides will automatically progress. If you want to pause the slides at any point, you can press the up arrow on your keyboard. And then when you're ready to continue the slides, you can press the down arrow, and then they will begin to automatically advance again. The expected outcomes for this module are just to explore the fraction standard involving division of fractions, and then to identify strategies for solving division problems involving fractions. This, as stated previously, the standard that we're looking at is 5NF7. Uh, this standard asks that we connect uh, students' knowledge of division of whole numbers uh, to division of a unit fraction by a whole number or a whole number by a unit fraction. So pretty much what the standard is asking us to do is start with the understanding of dividing whole numbers and then move into how we divide involving fractions. Uh, the first part of this standard asks uh, teachers to focus on dividing a unit fraction by a whole number um, a unit fraction is just any fraction that has 1 as the numerator. Uh, in any problem that you see within this standard at 5th grade, you will always only see unit fractions. So you will always have one number be a unit fraction and one number be a whole number. And that's only the case for division of fractions. That's not the case for multiplication of fractions. Um, in the second part of this standard, we're going to look at dividing a whole number by a unit fraction. So it's just the, the inverse of what we just said in Part A. So in Part A, um, an example of this might be um, 1 fourth divided by 4. Uh, in Part B, an example of this might be 4 divided by 1 fourth. And as I just said previously, you will only always have one whole number and one unit fraction. We don't deal with mixed numbers here, and we don't deal with um, non-unit fractions like 2 thirds or 3 fourths here. The last part of this standard is um, C, which is solving real, word, real world problems. Um, but pretty much if you're teaching A and B and embedding word problems into them, um, you'll have taught the entire standard. So as I said before, the standard asks that we draw upon students' knowledge of whole numbers. So as I teach the standard, I typically start with a scenario involving whole numbers, and then I move into fractions. And I'm going to share with you right now the scenario that I typically start with. Uh, so I'm famous for throwing bean parties. People travel from all over the country to attend my bean parties, and I'm actually having one um, coming up pretty soon, and I tell my students about it. Um, at my bean party, I will have four cups of beans, um, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that's okay because people will be happy to eat my beans. Um, as I tell the students about this, I'll have a pitcher that has four cups of beans in it, and I, then I would pour that pitcher of beans into four separate cups. Um, I tell the students I really want people to leave my bean parties happy and full, so I want to give each person that attends my party two cups of beans. So then I ask the students, if I give each person two cups of beans, how many people could I feed? And then I ask students to tell me what operation could we use if we were writing the equation to solve this. The students pretty easily will come up with either repeated subtraction or division, um, and they will pretty easily come up with the number two uh, for me being able to serve two people, two cups of beans. But you know, really, two, two people at a party, that really isn't a party. So let's reduce the amount that we give everybody um, to one cup. So we'll decrease the serving size um, to one cup. How many people could come to my party then? Well, if we're um, reducing the serving size, we'll be able to end up repeatedly subtracting four or repeatedly taking away one, um, and we will end up being able to invite four people. As I tell students this, I rearrange the cups and I repeatedly take away one cup, one cup, one cup, one cup to show that I now am changing the servings um, to one cup servings and we could give four people um, beans at my party. But you know what? Four people really isn't a party either. So then I ask the students, if we decrease the size of the serving to a half a cup, could we invite more people? So then what I do is I, I, have, I pour out, pull out four more empty cups, and I redistribute the beans. So each cup has a half a cup in it, half a cup of beans in it. 
And the students come to the conclusion, yes, you could invite more people. Um, you're repeatedly subtracting a half, and you can do that eight times. So you have eight half cup servings. But you know, eight really isn't a huge party either. I really want to have a really big party, have some um, beans at this party for everybody. So I ask the students, so then I would ask the students, what if I divide by one-fourth? I'm going to repeatedly take away one-fourth cup servings. Could I invite more people? I ask the students, how would my model look like? So I'm going to have them draw a model of what this would look like. How many portions would I have? So essentially, how many people could I invite? And then why is the number of portions getting larger as I'm decreasing the size of my servings? Uh, hopefully students will create some sort of drawing similar to this, so they would draw their four cups, and they would show each cup um, is divided into fourths, and we're going to repeatedly take away fourths until we figure out how many servings, which would end up being 16 servings. Um, this draws on the concept that the smaller uh, the fraction, the more times we could take it away. So the problem we just looked at was actually where we knew the measure or the size of the parts that we were taking away. We just didn't know how many times we would be able to take that away from the whole. That's called measurement division. And measurement division, again, is just when you know the size of the part, you just don't know how many times you can take the part away. Um, this type of problem can be solved using repeated subtraction, just like we did on the previous example. Let me give you another example of what this problem might look like. Uh, or another problem might look like. Uh, four cakes are served at a party. Each person gets one-fourth of a cake. So the total amount is four. Uh, the size that we're repeatedly taking away, or the measure that we're repeatedly taking away, is one-fourth. And we want to know how many times we can take one-fourth from four. And the answer would end up being 16, just like in our bean problem. Um, again, let me just point out that the first number here is a whole number. The second number is a unit fraction. In fifth grade, we only focus um, on problems that involve one whole number and one unit fraction when it comes to division of fractions. Um, again, this doesn't apply to multiplication or other types of operations, just for division. Um, this actually fits in with part B of the standard, where we're dividing a whole number by a unit fraction. Um, I just wanted to touch, touch on why we can divide or why we can multiply by the reciprocal. This just kind of reminds me of it. Um, when I was learning how to divide fractions, I was always just told flip the second fraction and multiply. This is a legitimate strategy that will actually work every time, but we don't want to focus on this with our students. What we want to focus is on is that conceptual understanding. Um, but if you do at the very end of your unit want to go here and introduce this concept, don't focus on the rule. Instead, focus on why does this work. Right now, I just wanted to show you why this works. So in this problem, we're dividing 4 divided by 1 fourth. So we're seeing how many times you can take away 1 fourth. Uh, for each hole, you can take away 1 fourth four times. There's four holes. And for each, like we just said, for each hole, you can take away four times. So really, you're finding 4 times 4 or um, how many four parts times four will give you 16 parts. So that's why we can multiply by the reciprocal. Um, the reason I suggest not focusing on this strategy or this rule here is because in sixth grade, this is more of what they'll be doing. Uh, so in fifth grade, what we want to do is just lay the foundation by using drawings, by using concrete models, and really developing that understanding. If we introduce a rule or procedure too soon, the students will focus on that and never fully develop an understanding of the standard. So the last type of um, division problem we looked at was measurement division, and that's where we knew the measure or the size of the amount being repeatedly subtracted. We just didn't know the number of parts. This type of problem, this is the only other type of division problem there is, this is partitive division. And that's where you know the number of parts, but you don't know the size of the part. So it's the inverse of that measurement division problem. Uh, to solve problems like this, it's best that students create fair shares. So they would take that amount, the, the whole amount that they're given, um, and divide it into equal parts or fair shares. Let's look an at an example of what this looks like. So the amount that students are given here is one-fourth of a cake, and they're dividing that into four equal shares. 
So an equation for that would be 1 fourth divided by 4. Now you'll notice we still have a unit fraction in our problem. We still have a whole number. Now it's just flip-flopped. And again, that's all you'll ever see with division of fractions. Uh, let's take a look at how we would solve problems like this. So again, here is an example of a partitive division problem. Just remember, partitive is where the parts are known. The size of each part is not known. And we're going to solve this with fair shares. This problem states the Murphys threw a party and had one-fourth of a pizza left over. They decided to let their four children equally share the leftovers. So then what fraction of the whole pizza did each child eat? Here's my pizza. It's one-fourth of a pizza left. Here are my four fair shares. Now I just have to find the value or the size of each of those shares. Um, in comparison to that whole pizza. So I can see that each pizza piece or each share is, what is that, about one-fourth of one-fourth, but that really doesn't answer the question. So let's see. Oh, each share is one-sixteenth of that whole pizza. So please note, as I solved this problem, as I did my drawing, I did the first part of the problem, I drew those parts vertically. I made the um, one-fourth lines vertically. And then when I did my fair shares, I made those lines horizontally. That really helps the students if you draw the lines in two different directions for each part of the problem. It helps the students really see um, the parts in comparison to that whole amount. In order to make sure that you have a full understanding of the difference between measurement division and partitive division, it would be great if you could just take a minute to pause the PowerPoint and take some time to first try to write a measurement division problem involving a whole number and a fraction, and then try to write a partitive division problem involving a whole number and a fraction. And if you need to, you can go to the previous slides to review the difference between the two types of division problems. At this point, you can press the up arrow to pause your presentation, and when you're ready to continue, you can press the down arrow. The next five slides of this presentation contain a sample unit planner for standard uh, 5 NF7. The first page here just looks at some overview, some essential questions, the standard that's being addressed, uh, vocabulary, and then some sample assessments. The remaining four pages address the topics and the lessons that will be taught throughout this unit. You will notice at the beginning of the unit, the focus is going to be on measurement division. Then the lessons move into partitive division. Then there is a last part of this unit, and I thought this was really important to include. This part is exposing the students to a variety of word problems incorporating all different operations and having the students decide on which operation to use. We've noticed in the past that students can do calculations and operate in isolation, but then when they're exposed to the EOG or cumulative test that has a variety of operations, they're not really sure which operation to use, when to use it. So we thought this was an important part to the end of the unit. This unit is not all-inclusive. There will need to be uh, more, more lessons added in, but this does give you a basic start or a basic framework to teaching the division of fractions unit. Uh, take some time to look through these lessons on your own. As you do, you will notice there's three main resources that are being used in this unit. All of these resources can be found on the CNI Google site. Uh, most of them came from the CCS resource guide. The three main resources that we're looking at here are number one, the meaningful math tasks, number two, math expressions, and then the third one is Learn Zillion, which is just short video clips showing a tool or a strategy that the students can use. Uh, the meaningful math tasks I wanted to point out, you'll notice in the unit, in the lessons, they are meant to take up an entire lesson. It is not the intention that these are just quick uh, problems to do at the beginning of your lesson. They are actually supposed to encompass the entire lesson. So you should be using the teacher's guide for the different teaching points for the meaningful math task. One thing I wanted to point out about math expressions, when you use this, sometimes in the student book you will notice that there are a couple fractions that are not unit fractions for division of fractions. Make sure that you change those numbers. Make sure that you change them so they are unit fractions. We'll go ahead and take some time to look through the remaining slides. After the unit, there are a couple uh, snapshots of some sample guided notes that you can use to go along with the first three lessons in this unit. The guided notes are kind of uh, 
meant to be put in a journal so that students or, or an interactive notebook so the students have a permanent record of what they did during that lesson. And thank you for participating in this presentation. Enjoy your day.